Now, this class I will explain about the various soil foundation interaction or soil structure interaction. So, basically the uh, meaning of this soil foundation or soil structure interaction is the interaction between the soil with various found foundation or structural components like beam, plate which is resting on the elastic half space medium. Now, this uh, basically this soil which is represented by the elastic medium in, in the half space and these soils are idealized by various uh, models like uh, mechanical model, mathematical model or numerical model. Now, I will explain of various this um, uh, type of model, especially in this class I will explain various type of mechanical model uh, to represent the soil condition and how the interaction is working between the uh, soil and the various structural components like beam and plate. Now, first uh, if I go for this soil foundation interaction, or soil structure interaction. So, when this we can say that uh, interaction between the various element of uh, structure side as side such as interaction. between structural element like beams, plates of finite or infinite extent resting on isolated linear or nonlinear deformable deformable media. So, that is the interaction between structural element like beam splits of finite or infinite extent resting on isolated linear or non-linear deformable elastic medium. Now, in the, uh, 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 in the analysis generally the soils are assume medium assume that is presented by the elastic medium and a half space region. So, that the soil elastic medium of the soil is represented by represented by one we can say that a mechanical model second a mathematical model or by a numerical model So, here, so next section I will explain about various type of this mechanical model. So, now first if I go for different mechanical model, so first type of mechanical model which is given by this uh, soil representation is the Winkler model. So, first type of mechanical model that will 
explain that is Winkler model. Now, Winkler model basically that we can say that the load which is applied on a foundation system. Suppose, this is the soil medium which is represented by several linear spring. This is linear springs. So, here these are the soil which is idealized by linear spring and if we apply a load here. So, this is the uniformly distributed load which is applied on this soil, then this load is proportional to the displacement of the spring and where. So, that means, this load or stress that is applied on this spring or over the soil medium, which is directly proportional to the deformation of the spring. So, where k is small k is called modulus of subgrade reaction. whose unit is stress per unit area or if it is a two dimensional problem then stress per unit length. So, that means, we can that that, that we can say that, that the settlement at any point within the soil medium is directly proportional to the stress which is applied on that point. So, that means, settlement of or at any point or the spring is directly proportional to the stress which is applied on that particular point. So, here k is defined as modulus of subgrade reaction. Now, physically this Winkler's ide uh, idealization that it is a system of multiple in. So, that means, here the soil idealization it is a system of multiple independent discrete linearly elastic spring with spring constant k. So, we can say that this is these springs are the springs are independent so there is no connection between these springs so these springs are independent so there is no connection between this spring and this spring so this is the soil ground surface and these are the soils which is represented by a spring. So, that means, that springs are independent, these springs are discrete this is linear and this is elastic all linearly elastic we can say. or so with a spring constant
So, this modulus of subgrid reaction is nothing but the spring constant of this spring. Now, so that means here we can say that this deformation is for a idea is concentrated on a particular zone as we can say there is no connection between these springs and the deformation is proportional to the load or the stress which is applied on that particular point. Now, if any spring which has not loaded that means there will be no deformation. So, now the limitation of this model is that if when we apply load suppose this is our ground surface and then we apply load on this surface. So, there will be a deformation pattern is like this. So, that means we will get a deformation beyond the loaded region also, but if according to a Winkler model then this these springs are not connected to each other then this the deformation is proportional to the load. So, directly so that means if there is no deformation no load there will be no deformation. So, that means if we consider the Wickler model so beyond the loaded region we will not get any deformation. So, actually in the field that will not happen in the field or actual case we will get a deformation beyond the loaded region, but, but in the Winkler spring we will get the deformation only within the loaded region and even another case that as if it is a UDL we applied up to this zone and then as the if we consider the spring constant or module of subgrade reaction is same for this entire soil then every point there will be a equal amount of the settlement because as if it is q is the load then there will be equal amount of the settlement at every point so that is another limitation of this winkler model so we will not get settlement beyond the loaded region and the uh, uh, we will get the uniform amount of settlement within that loaded region also. So, so that means this model is in common use in the analysis of foundation problem. So, that means, so that means now the next stage is how to determine this subgrade reaction. So, that means here Tazaki in 1955 he proposed uh, that how this uh, plate uh, reaction modulus of sub subgrade reaction is calculated. So, that means here we will get that how this k value modulus of subgrade reaction or determination of So, this modulus of subgrade reaction is determined by plate load test. Conducted on the field. So, this plate load test about this plate load test I have already explained how this plate load test are conducted, what are the limitation of this plate load test, what are the plate size is generally used. So, based on that plate load test we can determine this modulus of subgrade reaction. So, that means the definition of this modulus of subgrade reaction is that that is the ratio between between the subgrade reactive pressure q 
q at a point immediately below a loaded foundation. and the settlement of the point y. So, that means, the definition of this modulus of subgrade reaction based on this plate load test that the ratio between the subgrade reactive pressure q at a point immediately below the roaded foundation and the settlement of that point. Suppose, if this is the plate that we have used and the immediately below the foundation that is the settlement y. If this is the settlement y, then the reactive pressure at this point that ratio that means, the k s subgrade reaction or k that is equal to q by y. So, that means, the reactive pressure here is that which in the soil reaction. So, that is q and the settlement at that point is y. So, now, this k is not constant throughout the soil, because as we know that for a flexible foundation uniformly, uniformly loaded that there is a non-linear uniformity because as we know that this k value if we apply the load there will be a this type of deformation of the soil. So, as I have, we have mentioned that the k value is if this is y and if this is uniformly distributed load which is applied over the foundation. So, that means, this y deformation is not same in all the points. So, as the def if our loading reaction is or load load is uh, constant then the deformation if is not same then obviously, this k s value will change. And if this because of that we have there is a several factor which the k value depends on that. So, these factors k s. So, this factor first one is the size of plate shape of plate then embedded depth of the plate then loading condition So, these are the factors generally on that case depends. So, now as I uh, mentioned that the size of a plate will play a very important role in the plate load test, because uh, in the actual condition in the field if the soil is homogeneous then the representation or the plate load test will be very good, but if the soil is not homogeneous and if the some weak layer is existing below the um, uh, uh, at a certain depth, then plate load test we cannot find that uh, layer or if it is a layer soil then we cannot uh, find the exact value of the uh, bearing pressure which, which uh, we are getting in the actual field, because in the pressure bulb or the zone of influence for the small size plate is concentrated within the shallow uh, region of the 
foundation foundation soil but actual case if there is a uh, actual site the influence zone or pressure valve will go up to a great extent so in that case these are the limitations of the plate load test so even though if the um, plate load stage the size that will also affect the plate size will also affect uh, on the behavior of the foundation uh, and then then how these actual this uh, modulus of subgrade reaction for the actual footing size and the is correlated with the plate size then those things uh, can be explained in this form so suppose the if i write that the size of the plate the first factor now for a granular granular soil or medium if ks is equal to coefficient of this coefficient of subgrade reaction is same as the modulus of subgrade reaction so those things are two things are same of a foundation of width b so if the coefficient of subgrade reaction k is for the actual foundation of width b and k is dash is coefficient of reaction of a long plate of width point three zero five meter. So, here plate site is taken as 0 0.305 meter and that uh, in the test we will get the value of coefficient of subgrade reaction if we use the width of plate 0 0.305 meter that is k s dash. So, that means the actual k s that will be equal to k s dash to b plus 0 0.305 divided by 2b whole square. So, that is the relation correlation between the actual case with the case which is obtained with the plate load test with the plate size of 0 0.305 meter for a long plate of width 0 0.305. So, that is valid for the uh, these things is valid for the granular soil. Now, similarly, for the clay soil, soil also will get a similar type of correlation for uh, cohesionless so cohesive soil. Soil medium. So they also will get K S that is equal to. K s dash into 0 0.305 divided by p. So, now when so this is these two uh, relation for the this is for the cohesive soil and this is for the granular soil. So, we will get these two type of relation which is related to the actual plate load test and the actual foundation. Now, the next thing is the shape of plate. So, shape of plate will also affects the value of k s. Now, one thing that if k s 1 is determined by using a square plate of 
point three zero five into point three zero five meter in size. So then K S dash bar is used. So that is is used. So as I mentioned that K S dash is determined by a long plate of width 0 0.305 meter. Now if K S dash is determined by using a square plate of 3.305 cross 305 meter, then we can use K S dash bar. In that case, K S is equal to two third of K S dash bar into 1 plus b into 2 l where b is the width of foundation l is the length of foundation so in that case and For B is equal to 0 0.305 meter, K is the case dash can be related with case dash bar by L into 0 0.152 divided by 15. L. Where that is the length of the foundation or beam in meter, width of the foundation or it is foundation that is also in meter. So, now we can say that. Uh, here we consider b equal to 0 0.305 then k s dash is also related by k s dash bar by this expression. Now for n this is for b equal to 0 0.305 and for an infinitely long beam this k s dash that is equal to k s dash bar divided by 1.5. So, these two relations this is one relation this is another relation this is for a finite beam of width 0 0.305 meter okay? and this is where L is the length of the beam and b is the 3.305 meter then k s dash is related to k s dash bar into l plus 0.152 divided by 1 1.5 l and if it is infinite long beam then this k s dash is k s dash bar divided by 1.5 and now thus this k s is determined by this is case for the actual footing which is determined by two third k s dash 1 by b by 2 l. So, now first we will determine this k s dash bar if it is determined by using this plate then that value we can use to determine this case and now this case and case dash also related correlated by these two condition one is finite beam another is infinite beam condition in this way. So, next one that we will get for this so this is the shape of the plate then the next one is the embedded depth of the plate. So, now third factor that is
Now here, if K S D is the coefficient of subgrade reaction, at depth d then k s d is equal to k s 1 plus 2 d by b. So, now if d is equal to 0 then k s d is equal to k s. So, that means the k s value that we are using for previous two cases. So, that is determined at the ground surface. So, where depth of the foundation is 0. Now, if there is a depth and definitely the foundation will be placed at a certain depth. So, in that way we can place this case is related case D is the coefficient of cyber reaction at a depth. Now, generally the elastic uh, that modulus of elasticity for a um, granular soil medium is increases approximately linearly with the depth. So, in that way that our k value is also will increase with depth. So, now there are few comments that actually as it which is common for any uh, plate load test that when you to conduct the plate load test you have to place the plate exactly at the foundation level. So, where the foundation has to be placed. Now, the plate side the limitation as I have already mentioned that because of this uh, small size the influence zone is small. So, we will not be able to cover more uh, soil layer if there is a layered soil then the result will not give the exact one. So, these are the things that you have to keep in mind when we do the plate toast test. Now, uh, another very important thing that the area of the load test should be 10 to 15 percent of the uh, loaded actual loaded area so covered. So, that means the in the actual foundation area area that is that will be covered in the field the plate area that should cover at least 10 to 15 percent of the loaded area. So, on the determination of this k k subgrade reaction when you conduct the plate to test. So, these are the factor that in the shape of the plate size of the plate and the embedded depth that will affect this case value. So, in, in this way we can determine the case value based on different size, different shape and different depth condition. And when you conduct the plate load test, we have to keep all these factors in mind that how where you have to place the plate and what are the area it should cover during the load test. So, now <coughs> these are the k value determination. The next uh, part is the limitation of the Winkler model. So, the as I have mentioned that limitation of the Winkler model that what are the that the most two very uh, common limitation or the important limitation of this model the one is that the springs are not connected. So, that means the there is a lack of continuity between the springs. So, so that because of this as I have already discussed because of this reason we will not get any deformation beyond the loaded region because there is no connect, connect uh, continuity between the springs. So, when the load up to the loaded region if there is no load we will not get any deformation. Whether so, up to the loaded region we will get only deformation. So, that is the lack of uh, continuity this is the major limitation of this Winkler spring and second one is it is the linear. So, this Winkler spring springs are considered as a linear spring, but actual case soil wear is not a linear one. It may be follow that it, it will follow non-linear pattern. So, that is another limitation of the Winkler spring. So, that means one first limitation that we will see that is the lack of
and then this uh, this is the linear so one is the lack of continuity among the spins another the linear response of the spins so how to improve this limitation so next thing is this we have to improve this limitation so how will improve this limitations so in the next uh, model that i will explain where these limitations are improved so one of the major uh, limitation as i mentioned that the lack of continuity so now we have to provide something so that the springs are connected to each other so that is uh, in the next model that is the improved model for this spring that is improved model where this lack of continuity that can be taken care so that model first model that i will explain that is philodenko and bodich model So next model is Filonenko and Borodich model. So where these springs, suppose in the Winkler model, these are the springs, which springs constant create. That is Winkler model. And in the Philodink and Brodich model, these springs are connected by a elastic membrane. So, here these springs are connected with a tension T. So, this is So, that means here the springs are connected by a thin elastic membrane under a constant tension T. So, now the in the Winkler model as we mentioned that our Q was equal to K or K s into W x y that was the expression for the Winkler model. So, in the Winkler model, the parameter that was involved is, is only K s that is the modulus of subgrade reaction. So, if we know the spring constant or modulus of subgrade reaction of the soil, then if we apply the load, how much settlement we will get, we can determine by using the Winkler model. Because if we know the load, that much load we will apply. If I know the modulus of subgrade reaction of the soil, then you will get the deformation of that point. So, now in the Philodenko Bordich model, Philodenko Bordich model we will get the, this is our load that is applied and then that is equal to K s into W x y. Then another thing that is T to del square W x y. So, that is for rectangular or circular foundation, rectangular or circular. So, this is rectangular or circular foundation. So, here we can see and if it is a strip footing, then you will get k q x that is equal to k s into w into x minus t d square w x by d x square. 
So, here T is the uniformly applied tension. So, here we will get this is a two parameter model. So, one parameter is the case modulus of subgrade reaction, another parameter is T that is the tension which is applied into the soil, into the uh, membrane which is used to connect the spring. Now, this lack of continuity things is removed because here we are applying the these springs are connected to each other. Now, if we apply the load on these springs and then we will get the deformation beyond the loaded area also because here now because of this connectivity all the springs are now connected with, with each other. So, these springs are connected and with the help of a membrane with the uniform tension T which is applied here. So, we will get the loaded uh, uh, deformation beyond the loaded area also. So, that is why the lack of connectivity things is removed. So, this is an improved model and this is a two parameter model where two parameters here one is the modulus of subgrade reaction another is the constant tension T which is applied this is the tension applied in the membrane. So, this is a thin elastic membrane. So, this is connected with the thin elastic membrane which is under constant tension. So, this model is proposed by Filoninko and Brodich. So, next model which is similar type of improved model or two parameter model that is proposed by Hettini model or Hettini. So, that the next model is Hettini model where with the help of this model also the lack of continuity will be removed. Here the springs in the Filarenko and Bodich model springs are connected with thin elastic membrane. Here springs are connected with by a beam. So, now if with the springs are connected by an elastic plate or elastic beams. Springs are connected by plate or beam. So, now if similarly we will get the expression q u that is equal to k s w x y w is the deformation then minus d del to the power 4 w x y where d is the flexural rigidity of the plate e p h cube by 12 1 minus mu p to the power square and del 4 is equal to del 4 x 4 plus del 4 y 4 plus 2 del 4 del x square del y square. And this is for the x y condition similarly q x that will be equal to k s x minus d d 4 d w d x to the power 4 where d will be e b i i b. So, now here these are the connected by plate or beam. So, we will have the expression q equal to k s into w d to the power 
delta x so this is x y direction so this is this here first expression this is connected by plate and here second expression this is connected by beam so here we will get the this is d is the flexural rigidity of the plate that is flexural rigidity of the plate and here d is flexural rigidity of the beam flexural beam so here we will get the this is full of d is the flexural rigidity of the plate here d is the flexural rigidity of the beam here d is equal to e b elastic modulus of the beam and the i of the beam and here also we will get the d is the e p stream modulus of the plate and mu is the poison ratio of the plate and h is the thickness of the plate. So, here we will get this expression. So, here h is the thickness and e p is the elastic modulus. p then mu p is the poison ratio plate similarly e b is the elastic modulus of beam. So, this is another improved model where this similarly this springs are connected with beam or plate. So, that we will get the deformation behind the loaded region. So, lack of continuity concept here also it is improved. So, next model that uh, is a similar type of model that is proposed where this here also the lack of continuity concept is removed that is our uh, um, Pasternak model where the springs are connected by the shear layer. So, now the next model that is the Pasternak model So, here this model Suppose these are the springs so these springs are connected by a shear layer this is springs and this is shear layer with a shear modulus g. So, this is shear layer. So, now these springs are connected now above that we can apply the load. So, we can apply the load or uniform distributed load. So, we will get the now these springs are connected with the shear layer of thickness say h and then we can get the deformation below the dotted region. So, there is lack of continuity concept will also be improved. So, now here if we the response function will get q x y that is equal to k s into w x y that is g p into del square w x y. So, now uh, for a isotopic shear layer g x is equal to g y is equal to g p. So, now where g p 
is the shear modulus of the shear layer. So, now the GP is uh, mentioned as that, the, that is the shear modulus of the shear layer. Now, similarly for the 1 D case that is Q into K S W into X minus G P D square W D X square D square W X. So, this is in X Y direction and this is, is only in the X direction. So, we will get this is the deformation again. or settlement and k s is the coefficient of so here also we can see is it two parameters that is one is k s is one parameter that is a module coefficient subgate reaction and G p is the another parameter. So, we have to know the parameter two parameter one is the shear modulus of the shear layer another is the modulus of subgate reaction of this soil or the spring constant of this spring. So, that if we know these two things then we can find the deformation at any region within the loaded region or beyond the loaded region both way we can determine the how much settlement we will get for a particular point. So, here the boundary condition will be within the loaded region and their, their loaded region there will be q and if beyond the loaded region this q will be 0. So, this q dash boundary condition will apply here up to the edge of the foundation q dash will be equal to that q or value and beyond that this q x will be 0. So, now with this way we can solve and we will get the deformation even beyond the loaded region also. So, these are the uh, we have explained what is this uh, soil structure interaction then what are the different types of models of mainly we have discussed I have discussed about the various type of mechanical model. So, first the Winkler model is because how to idealize the soil in the Winkler model soil is idealized by the spring then in the limitation of the Winkler models the lack of continuity is one major limitation another is the linear um, uh, spring that is con considered here. So, now to improve this lack of continuity uh, uh, the improved models are suggested one is uh, I have discussed uh, three, uh, three of them one is Pironenko Bordich model then the Whitney model and then the Pasternak shear model. So, and then how to calculate or determine the case, what are the factors affecting this case. In the next class, I will discuss about the uh, various other types of improved models and then how to incorporate the nonlinear response within the spring which is considered linear here. So, those things I will expand in the next class. Thank you.